Hi friends, um, thanks for joining me again. My name is Josh Palmer and I'm the pastor at Merchant Baptist Church. How are you doing today? How are you coping with the second lockdown? If you need any prayers, um, then please, please, please email me at merchantbaptistchurch at gmail.com. Please be assured of our prayers for you. Thank you for your prayers for me. My back is getting better and uh, that's through God's grace and an answer to your prayers. Now before we start, uh, I think it will be good that we spend some time in prayer um, as we start and as we remember today, also called as a Remembrance Sunday. So um, please um, join me as we pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you that today, as we remember the sacrifice of others, we are also remembering the extent of your love for us. We remember that you sent Jesus into this world to show us how to live, to be a teacher who teaches us how to follow your way. And through his death, be the means by which our relationship with you can be restored. Today we also remember that you have given your Holy Spirit to be with us, to help us as we seek to follow Jesus and live in your way. We thank you that wherever we are, whether we are reading this or watching this online, we are one in you. We pray that your spirit will speak to us, bless us and inspire us this morning. We ask this in your precious name. Amen. So friends, how do you remember things? There are various ways that, ways that we can try not to forget things. So, for example, I'm really bad at um, remembering things, especially when it comes to shopping. So I have to make a list before I go. Otherwise, I return home sometimes without the one thing that was asked by my lovely wife for me to go and get. And that is something like bread. Um, or maybe you are someone who uses a diary. I know, I know one person who uses a diary because they helped us recently in finding out um, a lot of birthdays um, within within the certain group that I'm talking about. So you might be that person using a diary, so then you don't forget meetings, birthdays, and important events. But also these days, some of the phones will send us uh, a notification reminding us of something important so that we don't forget. You could put it in your calendar on your phone and it could either give you an alarm on the day, or the day before, an hour before the event, or whatever settings you want. But there are ways around it. Remembrance Sunday is an important event in, our, in the calendar because it helps us not to forget why we have the freedom that we enjoy today. It reminds us of the peace that we have experienced here. It was not bought cheaply. Remembrance Sunday is more than a reminder of those who died in the First and Second World Wars. It is also a reminder of those who have lost their lives in other conflicts like the Falcon Wars, the Gulf War, Iraq and Afghanistan and many other conflicts. Remembrance Sunday is set aside to remember those who have given their lives for the freedom of others. Today, depending on what time you're seeing this, We will be pausing at 11 a.m. to remember the fallen and to say thank you for their sacrifice so we can live in peace. 
Sadly for some people, today will come and go without them giving any real thought to the meaning of today. So on Remembrance Sunday, what else can remind us of this day? Poppies that we wear. We wear them to help us not forget the sacrifice of people made in wars to win or preserve our freedom. We use words like, we will remember them, and lest we forget. We remember, my friends, we remember the reality of what actually happened today. We remember the dedication of those who fought and died. I don't know about you, but for me, when I remember something like that, it stirs me with a sense of gratitude and appreciation. Just remembering the commitment and sacrifice of others should also strengthen our own resolve to do our part in serving God and others. Throughout the Bible, my friends, God's people are instructed to stop and remember what he has done for us. If we are in Christ, if we have accepted him as our Lord and Saviour, we have no need to fear our past, our present at the moment, or our future. We are secure in him. He is with us. Jesus is our certain hope. Jesus is our hope and he brings light into, this, into the darkest hours. When we are discouraged by circumstances and situations, let's not forget that Jesus still loves us and he is our certain hope. Let's listen to the words of Jesus recorded in John chapter 15 verses 9 to 13 says, As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends for everything that I learned from my father I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit, fruit that will last and so that whatever you ask in my name the Father will give you. This is my command. Love each other. Thanks be for God's word. My friends, Jesus loved us enough to go to the cross. Jesus died so that we might live. He sacrificed himself so that we could be saved. Jesus died for all those who place their trust in him. No greater love can be shown to us. In a way, Jesus expects us to die for him if we are his friend. Not a physical death, but by putting to death our sinful nature so that we become closer to him. 
Greater love has no one than this: to lay down one's life for one's friends. We need to remember that Christ and His sacrifice for us. We need to remember what He's done for us. Throughout the Bible, God's people are instructed to stop and remember what He has done. For us, I would like to read、um, a psalm, just a few opening lines of a psalm as well for us. It's Psalm one hundred and five. It says, "Give thanks to the Lord and proclaim His greatness. Let the whole world know what He has done. Sing to Him." Yes, sing his praises. Tell everyone about his wonderful deeds. Exult in his holy name. Rejoice, you who worship the Lord. Search for the Lord and his and for his strength. Continually seek him. Remember the wonders he has performed, his miracles, and the rulings he has given. He is the Lord our God. His justice is seen throughout the land. He always stands by his covenant, the commitment he made to a thousand generations. This was Psalm one hundred and five, verses one to five, and then seven to eight. Now, Psalm one hundred and five is a song of remembrance. Of God's goodness to His beloved ones, it traces His direction, provision, and protection through their history and the lives of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, and Moses. For us as believers today, we can look back over history and how God has been active. God has been, my friends, and continues to be at work in the daily lives of His people. Is God at work in your life today? If you're following Him, He is. How often do you take the time to remember what God has done in your life? How often do you? Just pause and thank him for his presence and provision in your life. There is a natural progression in what happens when we pause, when we take time to remember. And it is important that we take the time to thank him for what he has done. Do you find yourself breaking into songs of worship and praise? As you rejoice in His goodness to you, or is it the only time you sing is when you are in church? What about when you're at home? Or in the car? How often do you take the opportunity? To tell others what God has done in your life. Maybe you talk with a few friends、um, from church, or maybe there have been times when you have come forward and given a testimony about what God has done in your life. We just recently heard. From our brother Howard and his testimony, praise God for him and Mavis. An incredible couple. But what about your family and friends who are not Christians? Do you tell them what God has done and is doing in your life? Are you telling them about the difference God has made in your life? And then, are you telling them about the difference that God could make in their lives? All of us have many things to be thankful for. 
All of us have experienced the love, mercy and grace of God at work in our own lives. All of us should be willing to tell others about his greatness. Maybe if it took more time to remember how God has had his hand upon our lives, then telling others about his love and goodness would come a little more naturally to us. Perhaps the key for us is not just being able to rejoice in what God has done in the past, but we can also remember that Jesus, in Jesus, our future is also secure. Jesus is the promised Messiah. Jesus willingly left the glory of heaven to come on a rescue mission to save us. Jesus came because of his love for us. Jesus came to restore our relationship with God, the Father. He came and he died on the cross, so that by the shedding of his own blood we could be forgiven. The perfect one died for the imperfect, for us. The shedding of his blood washed away our sins. Christ's sacrifice on the cross was sufficient, my friends to pay the price for the sins of everyone who repents and trusts in Jesus as their Lord and Saviour. When Jesus rose from the grave, he conquered death. He conquered hell. He conquered the grave. Then he ascended into heaven and he has gone to prepare a place for those who believe and trust in him as Saviour. And one day, he is coming back. Today, I hope you remember if you have been saved by repenting, by turning away from your sins, by asking God to forgive you and accepting Christ as your Lord and Saviour. I remember when I repented on that day. For all the wrong things I've done in my life. And ask Jesus to come into my life. To give me another chance. And he set me free from the burden of sin. I know that I'm a forgiven child of God. My friends, when we trust in him and him alone. We are assured of a place in heaven. Remember, God has a perfect plan for your life. Remember, in this tough time that we're going through, when, thing, when things don't make sense to, to you or to me, let's remember that God is in control. My friends, let's remember the words of Deuteronomy, chapter 31, Verse 6, when it says, Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid and do not panic. For the Lord your God will neither fail you nor abandon you. Remember, God is with you. He is always with you. There is no place we can go to escape his loving presence. God is not far off. He is always near to each of us. In Psalm 139, King David declares there is absolutely no place he could go to escape the presence of God. If David goes to heaven, God is there. If David descended into the earth, God is there. David goes on to say that wherever he goes, the hand of the Lord will lead him and hold him. That is an amazing promise we need to remember, my friends. Wherever we go, God goes with us. Remember God knows everything and he, and he sees deep into our hearts. God is familiar with our own ways. He knows who we are. He knows what we're doing. He knows what, why we choose to do what we do. 
He he knows all our habits, the good habits and the bad. Remember, he knows our areas of strength and our areas of weakness better than we know them sometimes. He also knows when we choose to worship him or when we choose to allow other things to be a priority over him in our lives. Remember, he knows when we are willing and, jo and joyfully serving him and others. And he also knows when we just can't be bothered to do anything at all. My friends, God knows everything. He sees deep, deep into our hearts and he knows our thoughts. But I want us to remember one more thing. God know, has a plan for us, for our life. Your past, your present and your future. Our past, our present and our future. All the days ordained for us were written in, this, in, in your book before you came into existence. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10 reminds us, saying, We are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus. So we can do the things he planned for us long ago. Hope is found here, my friends. God has a purpose for you. He has a plan for you. You are God's masterpiece. Just remember, we cannot escape God's presence. God's presence is always with us, whether we are aware of it or not. Remember, he wants us to know him. He wants us to feel his love. And remember that he wants us to be the people that he has called us to be. I hope as we remember those things, we'll remember Christ's sacrifice on the cross for us. And his resurrection from the dead gives us hope. My friends, let's bow our heads and pray together. Friends, before we pray, uh, I would like you to join me in, um, if you've got one, uh, a candle in your house, uh, then just light it. And um, as, as I pray this prayer, uh, just, just pray with me. Just look into the candle and remember of what God's done. And um, so you'll be seeing a candle on your screen uh, while uh, while I pray. Uh, may God bless us. We now remember before God all those who have died and we light a candle to symbolize the light of Christ which eternally shines and brings hope. On this day of remembrance our hearts and prayers go out to all who mourn especially mourning the loss of their loved ones. We pray that God you give us strength and understanding to honour and cherish. Help all those who are bereaved to find the same consolation that is in knowledge of your love, that they may honour the past by looking to the future. Jesus Christ is the light of the world, a light which no darkness can quench. Remembering the conflicts of the past and the sacrifices which were made, we pray for a world where war is still a grim reality. Lord, as we remember those who have lost their lives, help us renew our fight against cruelty and injustice, against prejudice, tyranny and oppression. Till we cry out to you in the darkness of our divided world. Let not the hope of men and women perish. Let not new clouds rain death upon the earth. 
Lord, hear our prayer for the multitudes in every country who do not want war and are ready to walk the path of peace. May their voice be heard and may they not lose heart. Lord God, we pray for the leaders of the nations at this time, asking you to pour out your spirit of reconciliation on them. Give them a longing to bring freedom from fear and freedom from what we want for all people. Give strength and courage to those who bear heavy responsibilities for the peace of the world. Lord, we pray for your church. We've been called to witness your love in this generation. May we work together. Lord, we pray that you break down any barriers which divide people. Father, as one body, we will continue to serve you in our community, wherever we are. Father, we also pray for all those in our health sector. I pray especially for, for the families who have either lost loved ones through this pandemic or their loved ones are currently going through this hard time. May your peace and may your love surround each one of them. Lord, you turn our darkness into light. And in your light shall we shall see light. Lord, I pray that may we put our confidence in you. Lord, you know that we are often filled with fear and 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 worry. Lord, give us courage and deepen our trust. You are a rock which nothing can shatter. On you we can place the whole weight of our lives. And I pray that you be with my brothers and sisters. May your hand be upon them. May you provide all their needs. Father, you love us and you care for us. And as we heard earlier, that you send, you sent your, your son Jesus into this world. You also came and died on the cross for us, for our sins. But the good news is that he conquered death. And he's alive today. Father, I thank you for that. Thank you that, Lord Jesus, through you we have hope. So, Lord, may your peace be in our lives. I would now like to just give you a minute to just pray for those in your life that are in need for prayers.
Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And let's say the grace together. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us evermore. Amen. Thanks so much for joining me again today. Uh, I pray that you feel blessed. And also that if you've got any prayer requests, please email me at melshambaptistchurch at gmail.com. May God bless you. May he keep you safe. And may you remember his grace and love in your life. Take care and God bless. <music>